بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على محمد وال محمد ولكم تو لايف ان كربلاء دير فيوز وير وي اجين فور ذا ثيرد نايت كونتينيو تو ديسكاس ذا غريتنس اوف ذا ريتشوالز اند ذا شعائر اوف ابي عبد الله الحسين اند اجين اي ام جويند باي ماي ديرست براذر اند سيرفنت اوف ذا اهل البيت سيد علي النواب فروم لندن Before we do get into the show, there is a lot to discuss, inshallah, continuing from yesterday's show. But as always, to bless our show, we will start off with the salutations of Abi Abdullah al-Hussein, which I would ask the Sayyid to bless us with, inshallah. Sallallahu alayka ya mawlaya ya Aba Abdullah Sallallahu alayka ya ibn Rasulillah Sallallahu alayka wa ala abik Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib صلى الله عليك يا ابن الزهراء صلى الله عليك وعلى اخيك هما البطل المظلوم المهتدم الذي واسى بنفسه لأجل أخيه الحسين سيدي ومولاي ساقي عطائشا كربلاء أبي الفضل العباس وعلى أمه أم البنين الطاهرة التقية النقية الزكية السلام عليك وعلى أختك الحوراء زينب السلام عليها وهي تدخل إلى كربلاء في مثل هذه الأيام السلام عليك وعلى أنصارك وأصحابك المستشهدين بين يديك ورحمة الله وبركاته Thank you Sayyid Ali for that again beautiful recitation and ziyara of Mawla Abi Abdullah Al-Hussein now, to dive straight into today's discussion, a continuation of yesterday where we were discussing the, com the companions and also those who took part in the Battle of Karbala. One thing we didn't fully uh, delve into was what were the categories of those people, the different categories of the people that took part in the battle from either side. Who were they? What were their positions? What, what was going on in the battle? Ahsan, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. As we have discussed in the previous nights, that the... Um, revolution of Imam Hussein alayhi salam was not confined to time and place. Mm. Although it occurred in uh, the month of Muharram, on the day of Ashura, and uh, it happened and it took place on the land of Karbala, but um, the categories uh, of the companions and the supporters of Imam Hussein alayhi salam on the day of Ashura were, in, were a group of people. Mm. And after the event of Ashura until today and until uh, the day of resurrection are another group of people. Mm. And the same goes for the enemies and those who stood against Imam Hussein on the battlefield. Similarly, they perished and they went away. Um, they died and their time mm. on the face of this earth ended. Mm. But again, after the event of Ashura came another group of people mm. and until today from amongst those who so supposedly titled themselves as Muslims as Imam Hussein alayhi salam uh, identified a certain group of people that 
Imam Hassan alayhi salam, we spoke yesterday about the yes. narration of Imam Hassan, yantahiluna deen al-Islam. Mm. Today we have individuals, in the name of Islam, they stand against Islam. They stand against Allah. the slogans of Islam. Mm. In the ziyarah of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, in the very famous visitation of Abu Abdullah al Hussein, um, titled Ziyarat Ashura, the visitation of the day of Ashura, mm. the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes and gives us the different categories of individuals or group of people or nations, mm. as the ziyarah calls them of the people that stood and participated, whether being on the actual battlefield or in the behind the scenes. Behind the <coughs> scenes, Ahsentum. Also the play a big role in what happened in Karbala. Of course, and without them, there, would be a there no wouldn't army. be an army. Of course. The Ziyara, the first nation, because the Ziyara says Ummatan. Mm. So the first nation, because the Ziyara could have said, uh, that single person or, or, or qabila. that qabila yeah, or that tribe. tribe. Yeah. Why does the ziyara say ummatun? Here the first category is ummatun qatal. The group of people that advanced towards Imam Hussein and actually t and actually killed you. Killed Imam Hussein. Mm. And when we say killed Imam Hussein, there is two Salam types Allah of Allah killing. Allah. Yes. There is a physical killing. Mm. They come and execute their command of the commander and they kill the imam or that individual physically by striking the sword, by uh, digging their daggers or the spears or uh, hitting the imam with their uh, uh, bows and arrows, with the stones, with the... Um, um, sticks. So all the manners that they all the manners that mm. were available to them on the day of Ashura, with fire, mm. uh, and there is another type of killing which occurred after the day of Ashura, which continues until the day. That killing is the killing of the personality, قتل الشخصية. Mm. We have قتل الشخص, mm. and we have قتل الشخصية. Mm. That started f after the day of Ashura. The same they did with Amir al-Mu'mineen when they were cursing him on the Prophet. Ahsent. They mm. wanted to destroy Amir al-Mu'mineen by killing his personality. Oh, just one big propaganda machine. Before, Ahsent. during, after. That's how they used their people. Ahsent. All of them, were, like we mentioned, un unknowingly took part in, in, in... They don't know who they were fighting until after. Of course. Um, so it's just a huge propaganda machine as well. Of yeah. course. And many of them, as we said, mm. when they came... Karbala and when they saw the the reality of things on the on the face value many of them backed out because they didn't they weren't told that this is what's going to happen they are going to stand against mm, the grandson of the sold, holy yeah. of course many of them were told go uh, the, this is the person that we are fighting is a is a khariji he's come out against the khalifa mm. of the time and it is our uh, to save islam and to save the muslims we have to go and defend um the Ummah. So this is the first category, a category that actually killed the Shaykhs of Imam Hussein, the person, mm. physically. And there is individuals that until today they are killing the Shaykhsiyah, the personality. You might ask me how? How is someone today in 2020 participating in killing and destroying the personality of Imam Hussein alayhi salam? I will tell you. It's a good question. I will tell mm. you because today Let's take the pandemic as an example. Mm. This pandemic, this year, has caused for many of those who in the previous years, they were in the forefront of the line of the, uh, those who participated in the Sha'air of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. They were amongst individuals who advanced towards the preparation for Muharram and preparing Majalis for mm. Imam Hussein alayhi salam. And this year? And this year, they unfortunately fell in the trap of the enemies of Imam Hussein alayhi salam mm. by taking the, the coronavirus and the pandemic as an excuse to stop their service towards Abu Abdullah mm. al-Hussein. They used Those it as an excuse, yeah. individuals who 
come and read and speak into people's ears and minds and encourage them to stop the sha'air of Imam Hussein alayhi salam and to stop the iqam of the majalis of Imam Hussein alayhi salam are they not participating in killing the shakhsiya the personality as an it's one Imam. thing it's one thing not being able to do it yourself holding majlis to yourself maybe you know you're not capable of doing it yeah these are this is different it's a completely different thing you not doing it and you discouraging other people from doing it as exactly. well exactly there are individuals that's, that's who the danger truly and honestly they cannot mm. because of financial reasons because not space not having uh, facilities the support. yeah we, we are not speaking about those group of people mm. we are speaking about those who are able to mm. but they choose not to mm. And they choose they to discourage they others. They yes, mm. and they are looking for uh, just a cheap excuse to stop their service. Ummatun qataletke. And that ummah is divided into two. Those who physically killed Imam Hussein on the day of Ashura, and those individuals who until today and until Judgment Day, they will continue killing and destroying the personality of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Ummatun dhalamatke. This group of people are different from the group that killed Imam Hussein alayhi mm. salam. There is a group of people that oppressed Imam Hussein and the progeny of Ahlul Bayt before coming to Karbala because they were part of the propaganda against Imam Hussein alayhi salam. And there are a group of people again. Today they are oppressing Imam Hussein and the followers and the lovers of Imam Hussein alayhi salam by yeah. stopping them. There is one time where you, you yourself don't participate, you don't organize majalis, you don't participate in the sha'air of Imam Hussein, and there is one time you stop others from doing their job. If you can't do it, why are you stopping others? So yeah. these people fall into the category of the oppressors of sha'air of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. And when you oppress the sha'air of Imam Hussein, you're oppressing Imam Hussein alayhi salam himself. Mm. There is another nation, Asrajat wa al Jamat. Asrajat is very clear. Those who prepared the horses and the animals for, to be used against Imam mm. Hussein alayhi salam. That behind the scenes team. We were behind about. the scenes. Mm. The people that stayed in the markets mm. of Kufa and, and, and sent reinforcement mm. to Karbala. So they are able to actually execute what mm. they wanted the to do. The ones that cooked the food for the army that fought Imam al Hussein. Those who sent the water, mm. prepared the food, or gave them the raw materials to cook the food, gave them. They all had a hand in the kitchen. They all, the they all had Hussein. a hand. Yeah. Those individuals who m made the army look huge. As Sawad, Takthir al Sawad. So these individuals, Asrajat wa al Jamat, al Jamat also, the Imam, or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, goes into that extent to say that those individuals who actually put on the lijam, the horses uh, straddle, those individuals, they also participated in the war against Imam Hussein alayhi salam. There is another ummah, another nation. Ummatun sami'at bidalik faraviyat bi. Now these people, they weren't physically available, um, um, available to fight Imam Hussein on the plains of Karbala. They weren't directly, directly involved, essentially, yeah. But they had, they had before the battle that Bani Umayyah are sending an army to Karbala, فَرَضِيَتْ بِهِ And they said, yes, good to what it. they are doing mm. is good. And there is an Ummah after the killing of Imam Hussein, they heard about the tragedy of Karbala, and still they agreed to what Bani Umayyah done mm. in Karbala. They would say it was political differences between two people. They did not take the stance of Imam Hussein mm. alayhi salam. Which is what we hear a lot the, this day and age. Today in mm. this day and age there are people that agree to what Bani Umayyah done. Mm. But we go further. There are individuals. Yantahiluna deen al-Islam. Today they call themselves Muslims. And they say if Shimr ibn Dhil Joshan or Umar ibn Sa'ad was not present on the day of Ashura, I would do what they done. Yes. A'udhu Billah. Sami'at bihi. Sami'at bithalik faradhiyat bihi. There is another category. This is all for our brothers and sisters that God forbid we do not fall into these categories. Al-mumahideen lahum bit-tamkeen min qitalikum. 
Those who prepared everything, so the army and the killers of Imam Hussein mm. go to Karbala. They set the foundation for the tragedy. Ahsan. Mm. Now, from the time of Amir al Mu'mineen, from the time of Rasulullah, the preparation started. Al Mumahideen al the foundations weren't set a week, two weeks before Karbala. They were set years before Karbala. Does that category exist today? Of course it does. Of course. There are people fighting and standing against the Hussein today. Of course. And there are people who are setting the foundations for them to do that and to fight Imam Hussein alayhi salam. So Ashura wasn't a political battle. It wasn't a a battle for mm. power and throne and it wasn't a battle between two different tribes and clans it was a battle between two categories of ways of life between Bani Umayyah and their way of life and their interpretation of Islam and between the original Islam which was presented by Abu Abdullah al Hussein. So whose side are we on? With, with our actions, what we are doing today in this day and age, can we come up and say we are actually the Ansar of Imam al-Hussein? Can we come up and say that we have done justice to our service to Imam al-Hussein? Now when we come and we want to know where we stand today in regards to the Qaviyya, the traditions and the um, Sha'ir of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, and we have all of these categories to come and choose mm. from. When there is individuals who aljamat wa asrajat wa aljamat, these are individuals who helped behind the scenes to prepare for the army to go to Karbala. Now, why don't we go and stand on the opposite side? We stand behind the scenes if we are not individuals who would like to appear on the front line. Mm. We help the mawakib. Set the foundation we for. We set the foundation for majalis. For our camp, yeah. We uh, we help people to organize majalis and set lamentations and aza for Abi Abdullah al Hussein. If you want to know where you stand, look at yourself. What are you offering Abu Abdullah al Hussein? Mm. When you are speaking out, are you encouraging mu'minin to participate in aza for Imam Hussein, or are you discouraging individuals to participate in the? Aza of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Or if you are an individual who has uh, a good pen, they write, they write articles of poetry. Are you an individual who is helping mm. Sha'ir of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, the propagation mm. of the rituals of Imam Hussein? Or are you an individual who is against the rituals of Imam Hussein mm. alayhi salam? What That's you can do, if you are not an individual who is prepared to go that far in practicing the Sha'ir of Muhammad Hussain, who, which is the Sha'ir of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because it's allocated to Allah, then take the stance of neutrality. Be neutral. Yeah, why go against the why Sha'ir go against of Muhammad Hussain? Yeah. Because you don't know how ima the Imam is going to react towards this work that you are doing, and you don't know how you are going to be judged on the judgment day by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No. With the points that you are making, where we could either fall in either camp, depending on our actions. When the Prophet says, for example, Husseinun minni wa ana min Hussein, we know that whatever we do, at the, at the end of the day, it goes back to the Prophet. Because Husseinun minni wa ana min Hussein. That statement alone, for me, just baffles me. Because Husseinun minni, Imam al Hussein is from the Prophet, he's his it's grandson. It's a very strong statement. But ana min Hussein, how does that work? It's, you know? it's, it's a two-way connection. It's an incredible connection. For the Prophet to say this, yes. it, that should be enough for a lot of people to understand that whatever we do to Aba Abdullah al Hussein affects the Prophet. Whatever we do, good, bad. It's like when he says about Fatima al Zahra, whoever harms me, harm, uh, whoever harms her, harms me. Whoever angers her, angers me. Whoever angers me, angers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It applies to Abi Abdullah al Hussein as well. And then he goes on to say, um, whoever hurts me, um, just. Me, he goes, ma udhi nabi mithil ma udhi. There is no prophet who was harmed like I was harmed. Yes. And then if you link those two together, that's a big statement. Of course. Mm. When Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which takes us to the, to the next uh, part of tonight's show, when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, ma udhi nabi mithil ma udhi, that's a very big statement. Mm. 
But who is making the statement? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, who is the best of Allah's creation on the face of this earth. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam is not only the best of Allah's creations, he is the seal of messengers. Mm. Let me go further. Maybe our brothers and sisters have not heard this before. All of the prophets, all of the messengers before Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, they are students of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma salli ala. Let me go further. They wish to serve Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Let me go further. Not Adam, a prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to ease his pain and to take away all of these difficulties that he's going through by the name of Ashab al Kisa alayhim as salam. Mm. The trials and tribulations that the prophets went through from Adam until Prophet Isa alayhi as salam. They are nothing compared to the problems that Rasulullah faced. You might ask me another question for our dear brothers and sisters. Prophet Ibrahim was thrown in the midst of fire, a huge fire, mm. and he was thrown in. When did, was Rasulullah thrown in fire? There's many occasions. We come and yeah. say, yeah. we come and say, Ma uthiya nabiyun mithla ma uthiya. The trials and tribulations and the difficulties and the oppression that I, the Holy Prophet of Islam, received, no, none other, no one from the previous prophets received this. And how many stories have you heard of all the prophets in the Quran alone, let alone hadith? How many stories, how many times have you heard of prophets being oppressed and being hurt? There was a prophet who went, he was running away from his enemies, he went inside a tree trunk. Mm. The enemies came and started soaring the tree trunk piece by piece until they cut that prophet into different pieces. When was Rasulullah sallallahu cut into pieces? He must be referring to a part of him. When we and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam comes and says, Ma nabiyun mithla ma There is a physical part to that statement and there is uh, uh, another part which is, which will come in later stages. Mm -hmm. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa, alayhi wa sallam might not have been cut into pieces. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa, alayhi wa sallam might not have been thrown into the fire. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa, alayhi wa sallam might not have re received the same uh, treatment as Prophet Isa alayhi salam when they were just about to cru 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 uh, crucify him, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made sure that they went to someone else. Mm. Or in the case of Prophet Ibrahim and his son Prophet Ismail. Mm. When did Rasulullah be examined and received a test where he had to slaughter his son Ibrahim? But oh. Prophet Ibrahim had to go that extreme to actually uh, get his son Ismail to lie down and to actually physically put the sword on the neck of Ismail and to start actually moving the knife to execute Allah's order. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala converted that command. He took away the sharpness of the sword. That sacrifice was that sacrifice rescheduled to another day. Exactly. Mm -hmm. When did Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam be examined like Prophet Zakaria when he had to uh, bring up his son Yahya, another prophet? He became an adult and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to Prophet Zakaria, I am going to test your patience. You are going to see Yahya, your son, when he is head, his head is going to be separated from his body and is going to be carry, carried from mm. one location to another. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa, alayhi wa sallam, we have a statement where we say that the greater the individual, the greater the test and the imtihan. 
and the position of Rasulullah is greater than the position of the previous prophets. Mm. The imtihan and the test and tribulations of Rasulullah is the imtihan and the test and tribulations of Rasulullah is according to his stance and to according to his level and position. Prophet Ibrahim, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, you don't need to go all the way. Khalas, you don't, I don't need to you've sacrifice you've yourself. You've shown your commitment. Khalas, mm. that's it. He stopped halfway. He didn't continue until the end. Prophet Isa alayhi salam did not continue until the end. That was it. That was enough. Prophet Ibrahim, the, the fire was converted into paradise. Bardan wa salaman. He didn't go through all the way to finalize and complete the imtihan and the test. But for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, he was tested at that time. And Rasulullah's test continues until today and until judgment day. Mm. How? Because Rasulullah still receives the pain and the oppression until today. How? Ma'udhi ya nabiyun mithla ma'udhi. It is not mm. only a statement made 1,400 years ago. Rasulullah is still pained mm. today and is still... Would you say that's through us as the followers or people who claim to be followers of Rasulullah? Or would you say it's just through the Ahlul Bayt? Because I could, if I was to hear this phrase for the first time, I'd understand the pain that he felt was the pain of his Ahlul Bayt. For example, when the door of Fatima was, was broken on her ribs, that's pain that Rasulullah felt. Yeah. When Imam al Hassan was poisoned, peace and blessings be upon him, that's pain of Rasulullah. When Abi Abdullah al Hussein, everything he went through, that is the pain that Rasulullah felt. Yep. Sahib al Zaman, may Allah hasten his reappearance. The, the suffering that he is in right now, waiting for us to be prepared for him, I'm sure that hurts Rasulullah. Of course. Exactly. It's exactly what you said. Mm. The Imam of our time, he is pained every single time. A follower of Ahlul Bayt alayhum salam, a lover of Imam Hussein commits a mistake mm. or is off the main path. So here the same thing when we we believe our aqeedah and our belief in Ahlul Bayt alayhum salam is that they are not dead in the sense that when someone dies that's it they die and they are buried and that's it. Ahlul Bayt are different. When we stand in front of Abu Abdullah al Hussein, we recite the Ziyar Ashadu and Naka Tasma o Kalami, Watara Makami, Wataruddu Jawabi. I, when I stand in front of Imam Hussein, and or in front of Rasulullah, or in front of Amir al Mu'mineen, or in front of Imam, for example, Imam Musab Najafar in Kazimiyah, or the other Imams, or Imam al Rada in Meshad, I believe firmly, it's my aqeedah that the Imam is sitting inside and he is hearing me. He returns so the salam, he, he answers your salam. request, he answers your question. He sees you mm. standing in front of the dhariq and reciting the salutation. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam today, again, another great message, a very important message and another powerful message for our dear brothers and sisters and to ourselves that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam may be pained today as a result of some of our actions. Again, we come back to the rituals of Imam Hussein mm. alayhi salam. Mm. If you don't agree, if you don't understand, if you think that things could be done in a better way according to your understanding, why stop in front of the other individuals who think according to their understanding that what they are doing is going to please Fatima to Zahra alayhi it means that until today and until judgment day, I will receive pain mm. and oppression. Not only from those who apparently stood in front of me and, uh, and opposed me, but from those who come on later stages in different times and they do acts, they commit mm. to acts, which pains Fatima to Zahra and Amir Rasulullah, Rasulullah is truly mazlum because with what you just mentioned a few moments ago when we do we firmly believe that when we do come for ziyara they are there they are listening to you they know you are there but Rasulullah in the situation that he is right now with the people that he's surrounded by you can imagine
greater than than all of creation. He knows what is going on. He's aware. He sees everything. Imagine the pain that he's reliving every day, seeing the Zawar not being permitted to go see his grandchildren in Baqiya, or no one knowing where his daughter's grave is, Fatima Tizara, peace and blessings be upon her. Let me narrate your narration, ah, just ilaha. to bring this idea closer to our minds. Mm. On the day of Ashura, 4,000 angels came down before the death of Imam Hussein alayhi salam to seek permission for the Imam to give them permission so they can defend the Imam and, and fight the enemies. Imam Hussein alayhi salam, because of the covenant that he has given Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and because of the secret relationship between mm. Imam Hussein alayhi salam and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Imam Hussein did not permit them. So what they, they can't just stand there, do nothing. They've come down to do a job. When the Imam of their time, because they are still followers, mm. as we follow the Imam of our time, and it's wajib upon us to obey him, they also have the malaika has mm. to, have to obey the Imam of the time. So they went back up. But they couldn't stay there to watch Imam Hussein alayhi salam all alone on the battlefield. 30,000 individuals are facing him. They're going to kill him. They came back down. They asked permission from Allah. Oh Allah, can we go back down and ask the permission again? Allah gave them permission. But this time when they came back down, they had noticed, they saw that Imam Hussein had been martyred. They stayed on earth. And the ziyarah and the hadith says, the hadith from Imam Sadiq alayhi salam, in the amali of Shaykh al-Saduq. Shaykh al-Saduq narrates that these 4,000 angels headed by the head angel who is called Mansur. This is the, in the, the, the Malaika, the angel that which, who is in charge of the 4,000 that came down. Mansur and the 4,000 or the uh, angels that came down with him, they remained on the plains of Karbala. Shu'thun ghubr. Yabkunahu ila yawm al Allahu Akbar. Shu'th. Shu'th means an individual who falls into a certain state problem, mm. certain state, that he doesn't go back to his normal state. So a state of constant depression. Ahsan. Shu'thun ghubr. Ghubr may be uh, translated in dust and sand. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. The, from the dust and sand of Karbala. Salamullah alayka Allah. So they Allah. stay mm. and until today and until Yawm al Qiyamah, we might not be able to see them physically, but when you go and stand in front of the Dariq of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, you can feel the special atmosphere around the shrine of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. So true. 4,000 angels crying contents continuously from the morning until why not? When the Imam of their time, Imam Sahib al Zaman, cries for his grandfather, Imam Hussein alayhi salam, and the angels. So, when the angels, when the prophets of Allah, every Thursday they come down to the shrine of Imam Hussein alayhi salam to pay their allegiance and to pay their salutations for the Imam Salamullahi Alayhi, then why are we not sacrificing everything we have for the sake of Imam Hussein Alayhi Salam? SubhanAllah. This is the Imam and this is his rituals and this is a test and imtihan for every single human being on the face of this earth. This is a test and imtihan for every single human being on the face of this earth. Mm -hmm. it's, it's amazing because we discussed initially the, the relationship Imam al Hussein has his grandfather Rasulullah. But people seem to forget that there is a relationship between Abi Abdullah al Hussein and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Being, being the embodiment of Allah's rule on earth, there has to be that connection that people forget. They just, like you mentioned, I think yesterday, people mourn for Imam al Hussein just because he's the grandson of the Prophet. No, he's bigger than that. He's, he's, Yes, he's the grandson, but he's also a connection between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is something we must never forget. And the sacrifice that he made was a sacrifice for everyone, not just for me, you, uh, Minhal, you know, the people yes, that are around us. Course. It's for everyone, the whole world. 
the answer to that question mm -hmm. needs a whole episode or episodes. We have nights coming up, inshallah. And inshallah. I know inshallah. we are short in time. Mm -hmm. The tradition that I want to go through, mm -hmm. I will do un injustice if I want to start mm -hmm. the tradition. Because mm -hmm. this tradition shows the specifics of the relationship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mm -hmm. to Imam Hussein alayhi salam. There is a relationship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with Imam Hussein that we, through the riwayat and ahadith of Ahlul Bayt, we don't understand that there is a similar relationship towards the rest of the ma'sumin. Mm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Rasulullah is greater than Imam Hussein alayhi salam. There is no doubt about it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, has a special relationship with Rasulullah that he doesn't have with anyone else. Let people, let mu'mineen not be mistaken that I am trying to say that the relationship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with Imam Hussein is stronger or more mm. powerful than the relationship he has with Rasulullah. No. It's different. It has its own khususiyat. There is a khususiyat. There is a speciality about that relationship. Mm. Why? Because the covenant, the relationship or the, the responsibility, let's say, the duties of Imam Hussein alayhi salam are different than the duties of Rasulullah, mm. Amir al Mu'minin, Fatima al Zahra, Imam Hussein, and the rest of the Mahsumin alayhi salam. They say all the Ahlul Bayt are ships of salvation, but Abi Abdullah is the fastest and the largest ship of salvation. Kulluna sufunun najat, as Imam Bakr alayhi salam narrates, Kulluna sufunun najat, walakin safina to Jaddi al Hussein. Salamullah alayhi salam. Awsa wa fi lujajil bihari asra. Allahu Akbar. Like Allah. what do you do when you hear a narration Allah like this? Akbar. That and should be clear cut. And people mm. come and, mm, and, and speak to us in a way where they're saying, why are you so much stuck to Abu Abdullah al Hussein? Mm. Why, why all this commotion? Yeah. How can I not be? When Imam al Sadiq alayhi salam, he himself says, I wish that I go back. Mm. And serve the Zawar of Abu Abdullah al Hussein. Oh. Imam al Sadiq alayhi salam says, I wish I can, I can come back and serve Imam Sahib al Zaman, Ajallah ta'ala farajuhu al Sharif. People want to come and serve, let alone people. Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam, they wish mm. they are present in this day and age so they can serve Abu Abdullah al Hussein. Slave or servant is sometimes used as a derogatory term, but people wish they will pay thousands just to become a servant of Imam al-Hussein, just to be at the service of the servants of Imam al-Hussein. That's, um, that's it's incredible. Tell someone, I want you to be a slave for 10 days. I'll say, get out of here, man. Get out of here. But tell him, be a servant of Imam al-Hussein, I will I'll serve him until the rest of my life. I will give you what you want to give me the opportunity to serve Abi Abdullah, to serve yeah. the Zawar of Imam al-Hussein, And this is the test, and this is the problem, where not anyone is able to come and serve Imam Hussein, alayhi salam. SubhanAllah. There are billionaires. There are billionaires who want to come and be able to stand in one of these mawakib and serve tea and water to the Zawar of Abu Abdullah. But they cannot. It comes down to tawfiq and invitation by Abu Abdullah. Abu Abdullah chooses he want who he wants to be in his Jawar, who he wants to be his neighbors. Because the servant mm. of Imam Hussein, as we say mm. in Iraqi, that the servant of Imam Hussein, alayhi salam, Khadim al Imam al Hussein, his status and his level is higher than mm. the, kings the kings and the emperors of mm. the world. If you, were Malik. if you were to make me choose between uh, land and a king or being a servant of Imam al-Hussein, I'll tell you never to ask me that question again. That's not an opportunity I want presented to me. But I can alhamdulillah shukur for the service of Imam al-Hussein and, and I thank Abi Abdullah al-Hussein for allowing us to be by his side for these 10 nights of Muharram. But as always, Sayyidina, we cannot conclude a show without the masaib and the tragedy of the Ahlul Bayt being recited and being told to bring a tear to our eyes. So Sayyidina, I welcome you, inshallah, to the pulpit of Abu Abdullah al Hussein, where you can help us shed a tear for the Masaib of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam.
السلام على فاطمة وأبيها وبعلها وبنيها والسر المستودع في عدد ما حاط به علم يا فارس الحجاز أدركني يا أيها العزيز يا عزيز الزهراء يا صاحب الزمان يا أيها العزيز مسنا وأهلنا الضوء وجئنا ببضاعة مسجات فأوفي لنا الكين وتصدق علينا إن الله يحب يا صاحب الزمان يا صاحب الزمان We call you tonight the third uh, tonight I want you to take Take you back to the land of Karbala when Imam Hussein alayhi salam is narrated on the second day of Muharram he enters the land of Karbala the poet comes and explains this scenario try and imagine Imam Hussein his brothers his sons his sisters the wa the family the women the progeny of Rasulullah the Companions, their families, all traveling towards Karbala. This poet explains the situation. Tell me, what is the name of this land? Because as soon as I entered this land, I felt something in my heart. Masmuhadil Ardoyam, 
صحبوا فقولوا هذه كربلاء هذه كربلاء ما اسم هذه الارض يا اهل العزائم اسمعوا الدهر ومن في الدهر قادم انني اسالكم والقلب عالم فانا نجل علي وابن فاطم tell me my companions what is the name of this land inform me and inform those who are coming in the future about this land i know because i am the son of ali and the son of fatima لست ادري اتراب ام سماء I do not know if it's the land, the soil, the sand of Karbala or the skies of Karbala giving me that feeling. جاوبته فبكى حتى الهواء يا حسين يا حسين This is when the companions of Abba Abdullah, are you prepared? Are you prepared to see how Lady Zainab received that information that the land that she is on is the land of Karbala? Yeah, yeah. Because that name brings sorrows to the heart of Zainab, pains the heart of Ruqayya, because they know what will follow in the coming day. The heart of Ruqayya, because they know what will follow in the coming days. Ya Hussein, in Hadi Karbala, قال كرب في ثراها وبلا. قال لهم ما اسم هذه الارض قالوا له تسمى نينوى this land is called نينوى again the imam asks again ما اسم هذه الارض ما اسم هذه الارض قالوا تسمى شاطئ الفرات still the imam is waiting for that name to be recited قالوا تسمى شاطئ الفرات ما اسم هذه الارض لها اسم اخر does this land have another name yes يا ابن رسول الله This land is called Nainawa, Al Ghaviriyat, Al Nawawis. No, still, is there another name to this land? Naam, ya bna Rasulillah. هذه تسمى كربلاء. As soon as the Imam heard that name, which was vibrating in his ears from the time of Rasulullah, كربلاء كربلاء كربلاء. The Imam changed his horse nine times. Do you know why? Because every horse that the Imam had changed it did not want to move further. It's as if to say, Ya ibn Rasulillah, this is your final destination. Hadi Karbala. Hadi Karbala. The Imam comes down from his horse, steps on the plains of Karbala, 
takes some sand from the earth, from the sands of Karbala, brings it to his face. He smells the sand and he says, Sadaqa Wallah, Jaddi Rasulullah. They asked the Imam, what is it that your grandfather has informed you? Imam says, my grandfather showed me the sand of Karbala and I smelt it, it's the same sand and it has the same scent. Then the Imam orders his brother Abbas and his companions to prepare to establish the tents. Everyone's looking at Abah Abdullah al Hussein. Imam knows he has a sister, she's waiting for the news of the arrival. Imam Hussein comes to the camel that Lady Zainab was using. He takes, he removes the cover. He says, Ukhaya Zainab. As soon as Lady Zainab hears the name of Karbala, she slaps her face. Why? Because she knows in eight, seven or eight days, she will lose her brother. warrior by her protector by her brother Abbas but on the day of the 11th of Muharram when they prepared the family the women and children to leave Karbala Lady Zainab looks left and right she shouts she speaks to Rasulullah she knows Rasulullah is there in Karbala. Jaddah ya Rasulullah, hadha Husaynu kabil araya. Oh grandfather, this is your son Hussein lying there on the plains of Karbala. But in what state? Masloob al-imamati warridaya. وبناتك سبايا Your women, your daughters are being taken as captives. Who is there to protect Zainab on the 11th day of Muharram? She looks towards the sight of the front. She looks towards the body of Abbas. It's as if she says, Khoya, Khoya, Mantali, Jibitni. Brother Abbas, were you not the one that protected my caravan from Medina to Karbala? Mantali, Jibitni, Khoya, Ubidaki. Oh brother, where are you? To come and see that Shimmer and Khwala and Omar ibn Sa'd are the ones who are taking care of my caravan. 
this was the most difficult of moments when Lady Zainab compared between the day that arrived on the land of Karbala and the day that she had to leave the bodies of Hussein al-Abbas and Ali al-Akbar all alone on the plains of Karbala and go towards captivity and go towards Kufa and Sham Sallallahu alayk Ya Gharib Ya Mabloom Ya Atshan Ya Aba Abdullah Let's raise our hands After weeping and crying for the Masaib of Hussein Raise your hands Surely Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala for the tears that you have shed upon Aba Abdullah will accept all our a'mal and answer all our calls. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Amman yujibu al-mudhtar idha da'ahu wa yakshifu al-suq. Amman yujibu al-mudhtar idha da'ahu wa yakshifu al-suq. I know you may be sitting far away in front of the TV. You may be sitting far away in front of the TV screens, in your living rooms, in your homes. But raise your hand with the loudest of your voices. The Imam of your time can hear your call. The Imam of your time can hear your plea. Amen. يجيب المضطر إذا دعاه ويكشف السوء أما يجيب المضطر إذا دعاه ويكشف السوء أما يجيب المضطر إذا دعاه ويكشف السوء اللهم إنا نسألك بالحسين الوجيه وجده وأبيه وأمه وأخيه والتسعة المعصومين